uh, as I mentioned earlier, might not know this, but you, you guys work on a lot of stuff related to open source uh, and uh, Linux. And uh, you know, tell me about some of the innovation that's going on, and then tell me about you know how that's uh, impacting me. Yeah, I, um, I mean, the broadness of the work that we do on open source is just a reflection of. Uh, as, you, as all the previous speakers have said, just the, the problems of the use of Linux and open source. It's, um, and it's well beyond mobile. It's, uh, we're seeing it everywhere. And obviously, you know, this is what our customers are asking us for. So, uh, and it's, what's interesting is that it's not just broad in terms of uh, the, the, the different usage model as you, you, you previously described, IDI and, you know, Networks and tablets and handsets and so on, but it's also uh, across uh, across the many geographies. It's uh, it's well beyond. Uh, it's not it's not all about the Bay Area. Let's put it this way. So we we're seeing you know cars in China running uh, Migo already. We see you know uh, uh, tablets in Europe, like you you talked about the the WeTab guys and so on. But um, the the work that we do is, is fairly broad in the OTC. I mean, there is obviously all the traditional work, or you know, the, the things that we've been doing for the past decade or two. You know, huh? uh, enterprise Linux. Uh, you know, all the chipset enabling, virtualization with KVM and Zen, and, and many of those uh, those type of projects. Then, of course, there is you know, mobile. You know, and. Uh, there's a huge amount of effort with mobile, obviously, you know, with, uh, um, uh, with what we're doing with Migo, but there's also work on Android, work on Chrome OS, and, you know, all the other, open, you know, mobile operating system. And then there's all the really, um, um, uh, you know, the new projects that we have, uh, that you see us uh, starting to work on. Obviously, the deeply embedded Yocto embedded Linux project, right, so that's a very key area for us. We're seeing a lot of uh, demand, a lot of uh, Intel customers want it, and uh, uh, we see a lot of people using Linux in, in these deeply embedded. And, and this is not, um, this is more towards uh, uh, things like, uh, you know, uh, telecom servers, you know, machine to machine uh, uh, interaction and so on. And, and, and these are, you know, uh, we're seeing a lot of growth there. One of our uh, uh, another one of our really key projects is Wayland, you know, uh, um, and, and this is, as uh, uh, someone was telling me uh, this morning, this is graphics done right on Linux. Uh, I mean, we've been living in, uh, uh, if you look at the Linux graphics uh, subsystem, I mean, it's been, uh, um, uh, it's really, it's been designed in the 80s, and it's time to move on, and this is what we're trying to uh, really focus on, you know, bringing, you know, the graphics subsystem to become really a modern <coughs> graphics subsystem in, uh, in Linux. Uh, in, in general, you know, I mean, uh, uh, in our work with Linux and in open source, um, one of our key objectives is that when, when, when a customer of Intel or when someone uses a piece of software, whether it's operating systems or whatever it may be, we basically want uh, that customer to have the best experience using that software on, on, on our platform. That's why we spend so much, and our customers are, are using open source, and that's why we spend so much effort in open source. Right, right. Let's give credit where credit's due to the, the Migo effort that's going on out there, because I know that a lot of work that goes on in Migo, not only is making Migo a great platform, but it benefits all these other projects as well that you just talked about. Right, it's, not, right, right. it's not a zero-sum game for <laughs> all of these different Linux-based efforts that are going on. How does that process work, you know, with, with the um, work you're doing? Upstream. I think, you know, um, um, it, it, upstream is the way Migo really works, you know, and, uh, and, and as you probably all know, uh, it's, uh, um, Upstream is basically the, the bulk of the work happened in upstream projects like in the kernel.org and on the Bluetooth project, on Ophono, Conman, X, Graphics, or whatever those, those projects may be. And, and the reason this works well is, is it's three things. It's scale. It scales really well. Uh, it's fast. This is the fastest way of doing things, and it's economical. 
So when you look at when you look at um, a components of an operating system, it's really composed of like you know of some hundred packages, several hundred packages. Uh, these packages are common. When we you know when we work on when we add a feature in Linux, we don't want to do it in in Migo and and go help you know Google make sure that they have it you know the right thing in Chrome for our platforms and and so on. We just do it once and it's done upstream and everybody picks it up from there. So it scales really, really well. That's the fastest way of doing things also. And it's very economical because others, you know, uh, others benefit from it. And we benefit from, from that, from that, uh, uh, from that. Because once, you know, when people use your software, you know, they, they tend to contribute to it. They give you feedback on it. They, they give you uh, uh, test results on it. And so, you know, so upstream is really a, a very fundamental way of, uh, of how Migo works, and it's a natural way of how open source works, you know, for you to, to be able to benefit from it the most. You know, you, you talk to a lot of people in the industry just because of the, the unique position you have. But what, when people come to you that want to create products or create a new service, I mean, what do they tell you is the reason that Migo is so attractive to them? Um, I think that the, the number one thing is freedom to do what they want to do. Um, Especially once you go outside of the um, of things like uh, like a, a tablet or things like a, a netbook, where you know, in, it, almost in everywhere else, it's very you know the device experience is very unique to the uh, to whoever is building that device, whether it's an automaker, or it's an OEM. You know, they want to build uh, something that is unique to them in terms of an experience, and they want to do it, they want to have the freedom to do it, and more importantly, by the way, to them, they don't want to tell us about it. Right. You know, so, uh, I mean, literally, we hear about some products using Migo from the news, just like everyone else. The, the we tab, I actually found out about it from, you know, from CNET, I think, or something some, some like that. Right. And, and we see this a lot. So, so the, the freedom of being able to use Migo without having any strings that actually just use it. And of course, you have to commercialize it. You have to do some work to make it, you know, uh, to turn it into uh, a fully supported product. But, but that freedom is probably the number one reason that people tend to gravitate towards, you know, uh, something like me. Right, right. Um, you know, I've got a couple of audience questions that I want to get you uh, to uh, address. I think uh, some of the people want to know uh, you know, Migo is an open source project. Obviously, the Linux Foundation is hosting it. Uh, when are we going to see the TSG expand? Is that a question that I've gotten a couple of here? Do you uh, um, <laughs> have any insight into? I mean, obviously, there's no opposition to that. Yeah, there, there, there is no opposition to that. And we haven't, you know, to be quite honest with you, that is not, that has not come up as an issue in terms of. Uh, in terms of as, as something that is blocking anything. In fact, we didn't have even nominations for somebody, hey, I want to be a TSG member. So if you think you want to be a TSG member, please nominate yourself. I mean, we have the, the TSG meeting, so you should, you should nominate yourself. Right. But uh, remember, the TSG's role is, is actually quite limited because everything happens at one level down. Everything have, you know, the actual decisions on technology happens by the maintainers, on quality happens by the people who are leading the quality section. So, so uh, there is a very well oiled machinery and it's very well deeply rooted in open source, you know, mainstream practices, as you all know, yeah. that you really don't, you know, you don't have that management that there is some committee that somehow magically is going to manage an open source project. It just does not work this way. But if, you know, I mean, the TSG is a, is a, is a great place, you know, for, for discussion and for, you know, uh, for people, you know, for people to give advice more than anything yeah. and approve some formal structures. But it really, it's not, you know, it, it, people, you know, think it's somehow, it's, it's a center of power and it is not. The center of power is actually well, well deeply rooted in the project itself. And, and, and that's, you know, but if somebody wants to be on PSG, please, you know, send us uh, your nomination. So